This is KGW News at Noon. And we start this noon with some new information about the Nakia Creek fire in Clark County. Just about 90 minutes ago, Clark Regional Emergency Services tweeted the evacuation zones are shrinking. There's a look at the map with the latest. The red area covers the level three go now orders. As of last night, that included almost 3000 homes. The yellow is on level two, get set, and in green is level one, be ready. The Nakia Creek fire is burning just northeast of Camas. This fire blew up inside over the weekend, prompting a statewide response. We find Devin Haskins live in Camas this afternoon, and Devin, this fire is getting smaller, and that is certainly encouraging news. Yeah, very good news. The fire a little smaller than what they first estimated. They thought it was 2000, but after last night's flight, they took a flight to give a, an infrared look at the fire's perimeter. They say the fire now burning at about 50, uh, 1,565 acres. Here at the uh, uh, Camus, sorry, here at the Camus Church of the Nazarene, Red Cross setting up a shelter for those evacuees. A couple dozen people taking advantage of the evacuation center here. We caught up with uh, Dwight Daly. He was able, he says a firefighter came by his house yesterday, said the fire was moving fast and to take three to five minutes to get what he could and get out of there. What he grabbed, his three dogs and himself. The concern with the fire, the Nakia, the Nakia Creek fire, was the strong winds and heat from the weekend. It blew up from 150 acres to that 1,500 acres. Now because of this, the state mobilized crews from multiple agencies. We've seen crews from as far as Leavenworth, Washington and the Tri-Cities at one point, it was said to be 20% contained, but now that number down to just 5% after it jumped containment lines. State officials estimate around 35,000 homes impacted either in, an, uh, in a level one, level two, or level three evacuation zone. Dwight Daly says he wasn't paying attention to the fire before, but is now, and that has, has him concerned. When you live up in the woods and you don't get rain this far into October, you're going to be worried about some guy with a chainsaw sparking a tree and everything's so dry that uh, a tree can just literally explode. Now we don't know exactly what caused the fire. Uh, officials are saying though it is human caused because no lightning was in the area when it started, but the exact cause again is unknown. We do know that this fire did cancel some uh, school today. The Washougal School District canceling classes as well as Mount Pleasant over in Skamania County also cla uh, canceling classes too. Just northwest of the fire at Larch uh, Correction Center, they've evacuated the inmates there, moving them to other Washington DOC properties. For now, that's the latest here in Camus. We'll send it back to you, Brenda. Yeah, lots of things in play. Devin, thank you. We will bring you updates on the fire on air and on KGW.com. You can also text the word wildfire to 503-226-5088. We'll send a link to your phone with everything you need to know. Meteorologist Chris McGinnis is also tracking the fire. So Chris, what is the wind doing today? Because that was such a big deal yesterday. That was exactly the reason that that fire spread so quickly overnight Saturday into Sunday. Saturday we had winds gusting 30 to 40 miles an hour. The winds were still pretty gusty yesterday, although they began to slacken a little bit late in the afternoon. And today we've had a wind shift to the west. So the winds are now out of the west and they're very, very light. You can see, in fact, a uh, calm wind being reported at Troutdale. We've got a three mile an hour wind uh, atop the Fremont Bridge right now. We go out a little wider and again, the, the wind is generally pretty light here across southwest Washington and northwest Oregon, and it will remain such uh, for the rest of the day today. That said, air quality is also an issue with the smoke, not just from the Nakia Creek fire, but numerous fires burning uh, west of the Cascades and our smoke modeling does pick up on that. You'll also note that as I roll our computer model into tomorrow, the winds up around 5,000 feet or so uh, will help steer some of that Nakia, uh, excuse me, Nakia Creek fire smoke uh, into the northern Willamette Valley. So it's likely that tomorrow actually winds up turning pretty hazy. For now, we actually have a little bit of cloud cover out there this morning. That will burn off. We're 64 last check at PDX. We finished the day with sunshine and temperatures in the low 70s. Uh, still way above average and Brenda, it gets a little warmer from here too for Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we finally have some great news in the seven day forecast in the form of rain. More on that in a few minutes. We'll see you then. Thank you, Chris.
The editorial board at Oregon's largest newspaper has endorsed Democrat Tina Kotek for governor. In making the announcement, the board applauded her plan to tackle the housing crisis and homelessness. However, the editorial board said Republican Christine Drazen and Betsy Johnson, who's running unaffiliated, are also qualified for the job, writing, quote, regardless of who wins, Oregon will be in better hands than it is now. Well, KGW and the Oregonian will co-host the final gubernatorial debate this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You can watch it live on all of our platforms, including KGW Plus, which you'll find on Roku or the Fire TV app. Hey, a little bit of good news about the sky-high price of gas in Portland. Gas Buddy reports prices fell about 20 cents last week to 5.42 a gallon. West Coast stations are well above the national average at 386. The other thing to keep an eye on is the price of diesel, and here's why. If it's more expensive for those truckers to fill up and move goods cross country, the increase will likely get passed on to you when you shop at the store. Now to some news from Portland police. They arrested a man in connection with a deadly stabbing this morning. Around 1230, officers went to Northeast 42nd and Widler in the Hollywood neighborhood and found an injured man and woman. The man died there on the street. The woman was taken to the hospital and she's recovering this afternoon. Police arrested 38-year-old James David Hera at the scene. He's now charged with second degree murder and assault. Police haven't said yet what motivated this attack. A man shot by police in downtown Portland Friday night is now in jail, charged with attempted assault. Police received several calls about the man chasing people with a knife near 12th and Jefferson. One officer wound up shooting the man. He is out of the hospital now and behind bars. The officer involved is on administrative leave. And police are investigating a crash that killed a pedestrian in southeast Portland this morning. This happened at the corner of 146th and Stark around 7 a.m. The driver did stay at the scene and is cooperating with investigators.